Hi. Two days ago at CppCon on Thursday night, I gave a lightning talk about C++ community service. And as five minutes, which I had, uh, it's pretty short to talk about this. I thought I'd record a bit of a longer version where I'm not as time stressed now, two days later, and put that on my channel. And later you can see the live version uh, at the channel from CppCon. So in case you don't know, I am um, Jens Weller and I organize my EC++. That's basically all you need to know. And yeah, yeah 2020. Um, so the one thing I will talk about in this lightning talk is the mini C++ survey, which I wrote as a tool in the beginning of this year over Christmas last year and launched it in January. And also, if you're into online events, because CppCon just ended and it was fantastic, um, I'm later going to also make like a trip report about it. Um, look at the online events, which Meeting C++ offers at online meeting cpp.com. Then uh, I want to start this talk with a simple question. Did you notice the lack of statistics and facts of, from the real world in talks at C++ conferences? And I did after a while. And in a lot of talks, that is OK, because this as what we do with C++ is often in the talk. And if we talk about standard features, about new features, about certain things like multi-threading, that's fine. But a lot of talks would benefit if we know what knew more about our, com our own community, if we knew who uses certain ways of C++ and and so on. So that's why I would like to talk about you about C++ surveys, why it's important to take part in them, and why you can benefit from them as a developer. Because if, if you talk to your manager, if you have a few graphs, if you have a few PowerPoint slides, that might be the convincing thing. If you talk to your fellow developer, you might not need that, but if, if you talk to people making decisions and are non-technical, uh, having graphs and something which you know makes the slides more visual uh, can really help you with argumenting. Um, and I want to point out that uh, there are already two annual surveys running for some years now. Uh, ISO CPP and JetBrains provides these surveys. Um, there are annual surveys and um, as this has been a lightning talk, I cannot go into details for that. Uh, I will go into details in a talk I do at the user group Osnabrück on next Tuesday. So if you're available next Tuesday in the European evening, I think we start at 19 CST, I'm not sure. Just go uh, search for C++ user group Osnabrück and you will find uh, the meetup group and then be able to attend the event on Tuesday evening. Which brings me to my own tool where I decided to follow up with plans I had for some time. But in, in, in fall, uh, I was thinking about it. And on, on around Christmas and New Year's, I had the time to implement it. It's a continuous survey. It launched in 2020 in January. Uh, it has single and multiple choice questions currently. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll be able to update that. And you'll see basically a question here and a result. Um, if, if you're not logged into the website, there will be a captcha which you need to solve once. It's a programming capture, uh, capture and it does not ask you after the output. That's an important hint to solve the, uh, to solve the question of the, of the lambda, read it. That's where a lot of people fail, I think. Um, just some technical details, uh, I just have that in, in here to make people which watch the video later happy to, to see like, a bit more about this. I will go probably a bit more into detail in the talk next Tuesday and for now just yet. So session based, uh, I will talk about the new features later and uh, it saves the votes as aggregate, but also as a vote data set, which allows, for example, later to do a range based reporting. Um, but let's get down to, to some questions. Um, of course, have you been at CppCon? And surprisingly, a lot of folks which I reach have not been yet at CppCon. Um, and it is similar true for a lot of the other conferences. I have this question for meeting C++ where it's a bit more because, of course, the audience I reach is a bit more 
heavy towards uh, bias towards meeting C++, but I also have it for other conferences and it's a similar result there. Uh, so it's just the normal graph we see. And there's of course the, the, the hardcore people which have been on all five conferences and know, you know the, the scene and also already took the, the survey. And then there's the people which have been a few times and then there's a, a lot of people which would like to go and a lot of people which so far could not imagine to go. And maybe they got a chance this year because this year mini, uh, meeting C++ and also CPPCon are online and uh, CPPCon just was online. It was a fantastic uh, experience. Um, but I'm think I'm thinking I'm going to record an extra video on this. Um, and then I quickly, uh, you know, ask the, the standard question, like, you know, what, what about the standards? Which standards do you use the most? So this is a single choice. And then you find that the uh, standards of the last decade are the standards which are the dominating standards right now. Um, and it's not very surprising if you, if you think about it. So this graph might help you to, to argue for moving to C++ 17 or say this is where everybody is. Maybe you should look to, to go to 20 if you're already in 17. Or if, if you're on 98 or 03, maybe that is for you a good base to say if our code base is able to move, or maybe we should make the effort. And maybe also some of those code bases, which are 98 or, or 03, uh, can never really move towards the newer standards because they are just not being touched by that. Um, and you decide to, to keep them there and then maybe rewrite them in modern C later and replace them. That's you know up to you. Um, I also figured out I could ask which. STL containers you, you use, right? So it's not very surprising that most folks use Vector. Or I hope everyone uses Vector in one way or another. Um, I put span in here to just get also some number, numbers on span, and people seem to use spans. Uh, there are some people using forward list, and a lot of other containers in use, as you see. Um, I asked a question, not only one question, actually several questions about build systems, but I chose this one. Uh, for this lightning talk. Um, this is a multiple choice one, so you see that CMake is very popular, but there's also a few other ones, a uh, single choice question, which is more or less the same features uh, as choices, uh, is basically CMake, and then there's there's not a lot of other people liking anything else. And so CMake is, is really the dominating build system in, in C++ right now. Um, but if we go back to the standards, I figured out that actually you are able to ask for the language and library features too. And this gives you interesting results. For example, for C++ 17 library features, it's optional, which is the most used feature. And uh, SD variant, string view, and file system are, of course, also popular. Um, if we go into the language features, we see that has include is not the most popular feature not very surprising, but also I think that uh, for most programmers, uh, structured bindings is just more useful than that, and it's more often used, and then more people will have use for that. So structured bindings is a, right now the most popular feature in C++ 17, and then there's you know a level field of uh, also popular features, I guess. Um, I asked the same question for C++14, but it's a lightning talk. I don't have time to show that all. You can actually look at the results when you take the, um, the survey, or if you, um, if you have a login, you actually can go through the results by time. Um, so I asked this feature. I showed this uh, library features for C++11 because I think it's like inter interesting to see that there's a lot of heap allocations. So for C++11, the most important and most popular feature for the library is the uh, the shared pointer and the unique pointer, so the smart pointers win the day here. And then there's a lot of other popular features like function, thread. And that's also not surprising, you know. Um, and this brings me to the bonus slides, which are about the two new features. Um, this feature I implemented in June for a talk I did at the Italian C++ conference. And there you can combine two questions. You can say, like, from which continent are you and which standard do you use? And then you see, uh, like, one question on, on the right is normal, and the other one is filtered by the options. Um, 
And in this case, if I look at it, um, it's, yeah, how many C++ programmers do you interact with your job? And the question I, which is answered is, would you recommend your workplace? Um, so this is a great feature if you know how to use it and if you find a use case for it. But it's also a Cartesian product of questions, and the most combinations do not make any sense. Um, so it makes it kind of hard to use and hard to, to actually get something interesting out of it. Um, another feature which I wrote this week for CPPCon, because one speaker uh, needed a little bit of help on, on a graph there, is um, you can now filter uh, the results on time. So you select your question and you select the start month and the end month. And uh, then, then it shows you the basic, it loads the results for that that aggregate from, from these months. And that's really helpful. And yeah, so this brings me to the end of this lightning talk. Um, please, Take the survey if you can. Survey.me, cpp.com is where you find it. It's around 70 questions. Take your time. Um, if you have a login, you also will find uh, that you'll be able to look at the results from time to time just to download uh, the results as, 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 as an image so you can just put it in your slides and have an argument with your manager about certain things you would like to see in your company. Like, why are we not using testing or sanitizers? things I can provide you now in, in numbers and you can show this is actually used and being picked up in, in the language. So the other thing which you see here is I invited people to talk about this after the lightning talk in the hallway track, which is like a track of its own. And then you go in this uh, track and you go to the second floor and you could find me on table six or seven. And these tables are virtual video conferencing rooms and um, you just can have a conversation there. And that's what basically CPPCon this year was for lots of folks. Uh, there were some interesting talks which you saw, but uh, at the same time, you had a lot of face-to-face -face and very, very valuable questions and answers and conversations with other developers. Um, and those rooms are limited to six or eight people in Remo. So it's always a small and interesting group which you can communicate with. And um, if, if you're interested in such thing, um, I organize over online meeting cpp.com now also uh, events. Um, there's a complete conference next Thursday. And on September 30th, we will have an evening in Remo as a user group with Kevin Henney uh, as a guest speaker speaking on Lambdas and the standard. And that's it. See you next time.